Well, hi folks, Ken Sachs here, host of Real Estate Talks. Thank you for joining us for another great show. My guest today is Darren Watkins. Darren, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. You bet. I, Tell us about yourself. I work as the Government Affairs Director for the Spokane Association of Realtors, and we work very closely with a lot of our local um, business partners, sure. uh, politicians to try to help ease the concerns and the crisis that we're currently facing. Yeah, so you've been busy lately. I've been trying. We're trying at every avenue. I mean, it's um, it's abundantly clear that we are in a crisis. I mean, we are looking at housing prices 30% um, in just one year. Yeah. That's terrifying. Sure, let's talk about that uh, crisis with the with the housing market, uh, not only in Spokane, but in a lot of places around the country, but let's let's focus here on the Northwest. Right. What 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 do we let's talk about that? Spokane is really 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 bad. Yeah. By every metrics, we're one of the we are the highest in the nation for increase in prices. We are the lowest, some of the lowest in the nation for amount of supply, and it really comes down to supply and demand. Sure. We have restricted growing in this region for the last ten years, and now that's coming back to bite us. Right. And so you say supply and demand. So our supply, we're, we're down to two weeks we're about, inventory. Exactly. We're about 94% reduction in inventory over the last 10 years. Sure. And, and I, I've explained before multiple times on this show what we mean when we say inventory. And folks, when I say uh, two weeks inventory, that means uh, at our current pace of sales, no new units come on the market. And at our current pace of sales in two weeks, everything's gone. That, that's two yeah. weeks inventory, uh, which which we bit, and that obviously is a seller's market, mm -hmm. and so we don't have the supply, but we have this demand, and when the demand increases, what happens to prices? Sure. But it it they elevate right. and they escalate, and we're at a point now where uh, where tenants who are um, uh, wanting to buy a house or even not wanting to buy a house, we have a shortage of rental units. Mm -hmm. And so that's putting uh, upward pressure on rents. Mm -hmm. And then so we hear stories of tenants getting a 500 or more dollar increase a month. Well, we should buy a house then. And, but there's nothing to buy. And there's nothing to buy. And, and we know from our data that over half of the people who rent right now in Spokane yep. are, are actively looking to buy a house. Sure. But... When their price range was that 150, 200, and suddenly those housing prices are now 250, 300, 350, that's 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 a there's a lot of folks that are in the marketplace right now just frustrated because there's nothing to buy. To put it in hard numbers, right now there are 300 homes for sale in all of Spokane County. By comparison, every month we used to see 2,800 homes. Yeah, wow. Just 10 years ago, and sure. it's. And, and on top of that, we have one more element that everybody keeps ignoring. But Wall Street Journal called this the great migration. Probably the greatest migration in the Industrial Revolution mm -hmm. is that people don't have to live where they work. Right. COVID just exasperated That's that. Right. And now we are looking at increases of anywhere from 8, 10, 15, 20,000 people a year moving here from Spokane. And, and when they come here, they're coming from major metropolitan sure. areas. They've sold their home for a lot more. Suddenly the home in Spokane, prices that we look at and are astonished at, well, that's cheaper than they sold their house for. So they're like, oh, 400, oh, I'll go to 450. And, and, those, and that, all of those things added demand. We've gone too far with limited supply and who gets killed in the middle or squeezed out are people in Spokane who have traditionally seen prices at a certain level sure. that have only, their wages aren't going up. Right. And the same with, we know as well for renters, renters who rent prices always follow housing. It takes a little bit of a lag, but if you're increasing your housing prices 30% a year, rents are going to continue to rise. That's right. And, and you mentioned uh, folks moving here. I, I, I call them affectionately equity refugees. They're moving here. Four fifty, five hundred thousand cash. Yes. So here, one in five homes right now in Spokane are actually being sold for cash. Right. That's a record number. And how am I a buyer who is going to get a loan? How am I going to compete with a cash buyer? Sure. Who's going to Who's going to pay fifty thousand dollars over asking? Correct. I it, I can't do it. I can't do it. And you're seeing 
and you're starting to see you're say, if there's any good news, it's that you're starting to see that number sort of collapsing. The, the percentages over asking are starting to come sure. down a little bit. But at the same time, those, those homes that were traditionally considered affordable are almost gone. That's right. That's right. Is there a light at the end of this tunnel? Where, 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 where are we going to be in two, three years, do you think? Like, is there any relief in sight, Darren? We're fighting like crazy for it. I mean, we are fighting so hard. Yeah. It's honestly, in our own city council, we have council members who can sit, continue to insist there's not a crisis. Oh, my. And so it's a huge gap. And so we are pushing at every corner to start building more. Yeah. Right? Clearly, people have a need. Where are my kids going to live? Where, where are your parents going to come back and live? Where are... It's, 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 we have to start thinking about what we want to be as a city. Mm -hmm. And if we say, you know what, we're going to be like Lake Tahoe, those who have it, great. Those who don't, go somewhere else. Yeah. Or do we still want to be a vibrant city that can attract businesses, can attract people, can attract higher paying jobs? I mean, is that what we want? And that's, those are some hard questions. Yeah. So as far as, as any, as any hope, any indication, I mean, when you say city council who are, are there representing the people, yes. yet they say they're in denial of any kind of crisis. I don't sure. understand how. There's been some recent changes. Okay. So we just recently had this housing action plan that the city of Spokane came out with. Okay. And um, it was a fight. We, they had estimates on housing needs that, there wasn't a single expert that I could identify who agreed with that number. They were saying, oh, we only need 300 homes a year. Well, we could sell 300 homes a month sure. if they were available. And, and, there is, and, and we've been very persuasive now. We've gotten good data. We, we, we collected friends. We've written letters. And, and they're starting to come around and they're saying, okay, let's look at this. So we're hopeful. We saw some things at the, I mean, we're talking literally an hour before the vote mm -hmm. on this action plan, they came up with a five-page list of addendums. And we looked at that and said, wow, thank you. Because, and, it, and, it, and it's just the start of the process. Sure, It'll just open the doors to be able to build more, but you still have to have all the other elements, right? You need land, you need workforce, right. you need investment. But clearly, there's enough demand that that we think, we think can be good for everyone. If we focus on building, especially workforce, affordable housing, mm -hmm. um, you'll create a ton of construction jobs locally. You'll start um, enhancing local contractors to get back in the game and, and maybe grow another new generation of them. There's a lot of opportunity here and we're pretty excited about it. But right now we have to do and when people say, what's the magic bullet? I say everything. Yeah. Is it expand the, the borders of the growth net? Yes. Is it to maybe do some better jobs of, of making more homes in the same space? Yes. Is it growing up? Yes. All of it. We need all of it to try to, I don't know that we'll ever turn the tide on those prices, but at the very least, we can put a damper on what the growth is and at least supply housing with people who need it. Yeah, and it, it sounds like now you, you have the attention of, of city council and, and you're kind of getting them, okay, close to understanding really where we're at and having a true pulse on our market, mm -hmm. uh, maybe maybe relaxing some of the regulations, some mm -hmm. of the, the red tape that builders have to go through and, and I don't know, maybe some of the costs associated with having to build and, mm -hmm. and just, you know, make it a little easier someone wants to build a home mm -hmm. so that they can build a home mm -hmm. um so good so um so we think that we're on the right track we yeah. don't know what will happen to prices i mean prices will always come back down but how far down will they come? i don't think you'll ever all the demand curves do not point that direction ken down at all like no in fact if anything it. our prices are rising are escalating at an escalating rate Sure. Just think about this. Three months ago, we were looking at 21% increase. Last month, it was 28 over last year. This month, it's 31% over last year. I And the demand is still there. We know that there's all those people in apartments I that are trying to get out. Know we know that there's there. all these people who yes. are moving here. Um, and there is every economist that we talk to says at least for the next three years, yep. 
you are still going to see this tremendous upward pressure on housing in Spokane. So we don't think that the famous cycle of real estate were, we're never going to go down again. It, it may flatten, but at this point, there is no indication whatsoever that you are seeing a, that this is a, there's nothing that shows why this is going up right. that says, oh, once that's satisfied, it'll go down. It's not there. Gosh. So, Darren, if I am listening to this and, and I, I want to buy a house, uh, maybe I'm renting or, or first-time buyer, getting married, you know, who knows what. What advice do you have? It's hard. Find somebody who's a savvy real estate professional. Yeah. Um, because it truly makes a difference. Yeah. Oh. And, and I will say, when people say, oh, we've, we've been bidding on a house and it got 30 offers. Well, then you're going to have to make 30 offers before you get a home. Yeah, yeah. So it is a patient game. It doesn't mean you can't be successful because every Correct. day people are buying homes. Correct. Right? Yep. But it may take some creativity. It may take some patience. It may change the idea about what your home is. Maybe you're thinking whatever that your vision is, you can change that. This may be this different area, maybe different size. Maybe it's the sort of thing there's a fixer. Those are things that suddenly you have to be more creative with to be able to just get into the home. Sure, but you said it, and we say it all the time on this show, you have to be with a competent real estate agent. They have to be competent, especially now, Darren, because uh, six months ago or so, our statewide contract just went through a bunch of revisions. Mm -hmm that not everybody knows about. Mm -hmm. And so there's a lot of dynamics within the provisions of our contract. Mm -hmm. A lot of them are favoring sellers. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you're a buyer, you better be working with a real estate professional mm -hmm. who understands those new provisions and how to use those to your advantage being mm -hmm. a buyer. And I think that there are, uh, as a former loan officer, I would also recommend getting a good loan oh, expert. Yes. And, and I think that so people say, well, what can I do besides just take time and, and save? Well, you can work on your credit score. Sure. Because I can tell you right now, rates are very aggressive for those who have better scores. Sure. And if you work with a competent professional, they will show you areas of how you can make enormous gains in that credit score. Yes. And so suddenly that changes what products are available, yep. your pricing structure, because if that is a low interest rate, it increases your buying power that much more. And right now, those interest rates are staying flat, right? so they're very aggressive, and it gives you more buying power. Right. I just did a show with a lender, and we talked about that, how the typical consumer, hey, we go out on a, on a weekend to go look at homes, and we found something Sunday. So Monday morning, I call a lender, hey, can I get a loan? No. Wait a second. Like, how long did you know you, know, you were going to buy a house? Right. When you know, that is when you talk to a lender right. as soon as possible. Because like you just said, Darren, a good, competent lender is going to be able to coach you on what to pay down, what to pay off. Don't worry about, don't do this, don't do that. So when it's time for you as a buyer to pull the trigger, you are in the best position sure. possible. But that takes a little bit of time. So don't call that lender the day before you want to draft an offer. Sure. Call them early on. And there's ways to craft those offers. Because sure. I got to say, the... the, the at the end of the day, it's all about how much is this going to cost me, right? Right, And and are there ways to protect myself? And there certainly are. And I know that like one of the questions you often hear is that, well, I don't want to buy a house because I don't want, I, what if something goes wrong and breaks? Well, there are tremendous products on the marketplace to help cover that, right? You can get homeowners warranties. You can get, I know part of that's all part of this. Right. When you, when you sit down with professionals who really know, what's happening and you give them all the details. This is much money, I've got, I can't go more than this, I'm worried about strapping myself. They will craft that approach in the loan package, in the purchase agreement, all of that, just to your needs. Great, great. Darren, we're out of time here, but my takeaways, if I'm listening to this, is you can be successful as a buyer. Yes. Don't give up. Don't wait. Don't wait, talk to a lender now. Align yourself with a competent real estate professional. It's not so uh, my friend Johnny's sister's brother just got a license, and so let's just work with him because we all do the same thing. That is not the case. So, competent. And when we vote, add that to your list of things to look for in a candidate. Do they have solutions to solve this crisis? Solutions. Yes, I love it. Darren Watkins, Government Affairs Director, Spokane Association of Realtors. Thank you for being my guest today. 
And folks, thank you for uh, viewing into Real Estate Talks, and we will see you next time.